Joining us out now on East Bay Today, I have Tiffany Pei from Four Corners Arts. Welcome. Welcome Thank you. back is what I should actually say. Thanks. We've had you on the show before, yeah. and it is such a treat to have you. Thanks. There are so many things we got to talk about because you guys are just moving and shaking Starting over, over in that area. Yes, right? So I know there's so many events. Let's just start with a... What is this organization? Why are you here? What is your role? Right? I'm Tiffany Pei. Yeah. Um, I have a store in, in Four Corners, and yeah. I'm part of the Merchants Association. So I'm here from the Art Center. Yeah. Um, and you have a jewelry store. I'm just admiring the thanks. beautiful jewelry. I just have to say. Thank okay. You. Thanks. <laughs> but <laughs> um, the Art Center has lots of events. Um, yeah. Actually, they start tomorrow night okay. with a um, uh, it's a continuation of what they had programmed last summer. It's a compilation of artists, some poetry, some improv music, and also visual art. Okay. So it's going to be a wonderful evening. It's at um, 7 o'clock. You can okay. pay at the door. It's a suggested donation of 10 bucks. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. Awesome. Awesome. So that's event number one of many, many. It's Just called, kicking off the season, right? Yes. It's called what Reading is, the Water, by the way. Okay. So it sounds, it's going to be great. All right. All right. What else is happening? Actually, this uh, to Sunday is an Easter market. The Tiverton oh. Fork, Tiverton Mer uh, excuse me, Tiverton Farmer's Market happens yeah. every Sunday. And once a month, she sort of does a focus where it's a Like big, a theme? A theme for the, for the month. And this, okay. this month, it's Sunday. It's the Easter specialty market. Okay. There'll be fresh fish. There'll be meats. There'll be uh, veggies like usual. But yeah. lots of artists and gifts and local yeah. prepared food. I've heard wonderful things about this farmer's market. I've got to get it out there. It is amazing. There. Yeah. This yeah. week we'll have over 50 vendors. Um, wow. She does it every Sunday. And there's always something to buy. Amazing mushrooms. There'll be activities for kids this time. Yeah. So where do you go exactly? It's the, it's the Tiverton Middle School. So the okay. address is 10 Quintal Road. Okay. And, but middle um, school, Tiverton, we can remember Drive, that. excuse yeah, me, yeah, Tiverton. Yeah. It's right off Bulger Marsh. Okay. And it's a great location. She does move outside for the summer. Her, okay. She'll be moving in May, I think. Yeah. Um, when it gets warmer to the town farm that is actually closer to Tiverton Four Corners. Okay. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Outdoor. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, we're getting teased a little here with the weather, aren't we? Like, we are. Right? <laughs> so we're inside this week, and that's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, her website is TivertonFarmersMarket.com. You can also follow her on Instagram, very active, and that's at Tiverton Farmers Market. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right, we, we haven't even made it through the weekend yet. And we've got- and That's just yeah. this weekend. Yeah, that's just this weekend. What else? So what then else? actually next weekend on Saturday, March 30th. The dance. The barn dance. The, so what is that? So it's a, it's a New England traditional contra dance where there's a caller and a live band. Yes. Um, and it's I, not it's square dancing. We're, we're not using not. that word. It's not that. But there's a caller. There's a caller. You you know you can go by yourself. You can bring the family. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to personally go and check it out. I kind of want to check that out. I yeah. love that kind of. So you don't need to know what you're doing. You don't. Any Thank no goodness. experience is necessary. <laughs> okay. I think okay. this is going to be a you know something that could catch on for us if there's lots of yeah. you know and people I'm, interested. I'm assuming jeans boots, yeah, tennis shoes, whatever. whatever you want. Just yeah, be able casual. to be able to dance. It's and it's held in the meeting house, which is a large event hall like building. Okay. And so it really lends itself. It's post and beam. It's not an old building. It was built to look old like a yeah. traditional Quaker meeting house. Yes, you get to immerse. It's gonna be perfect. It's yeah. gonna be great. It sounds it. It sounds it. Okay, that's super fun. Yes. All right. And I'd like to mention that the meeting house is located in a part of Four Corners that's a sculpture garden that's open every day. Okay. There's some permanent sculpture, but the art center has a, a show every summer and this year is going to be a group show they haven't decided on who but the park is open all the time and there is some permanent work that's really really fun to see and there's a big daffodil yes, thing that happens there blooming. and so they're just starting they're a little late it's kind of cold and they're actually planted for jim weir who 
was part of um, building the meeting house. He was an architect, and oh. so it's kind of a sentimental but fun thing for those of us in Four Corners who've been there. Is there a while. like a little trail, or is it really just kind of go to the you garden? You just go it. You can see it's really open. The meeting house is behind the Four Corners Gallery. Okay. And you just you can <clears throat> park anywhere, walk around. It's a lovely place to walk. Bring the kids. Bring the dog. Okay. Um, Dogs welcome. Definitely. Yeah, some dogs sitting this week, so I need to know those things. So. Oh, good. Yeah, I know. So, okay, that's very cool. Yeah. So, do um, follow the Art Center Instagram at Four Corners Arts, both plural Four Corners, I mean, Corners and Arts, yeah. to learn about all the things happening when um, things are decided for the for the sculpture garden yeah. and the events that are happening there. We also have a, an Instagram, Tiverton Four Corners, that co is connected. It's and like we, a catch-all. We, sh we share and, yeah. you know, it's all... Everybody's working together down there. We are. In a kind of cool, special way. There's um, a lot happening. Just walking around is really lovely. It's a, it's a lovely destination, the Art Center. Also, the Art Center is going to have uh, kids' camps this summer. Oh, is that new? No, no, they have okay. those, All and right. they do winter break camps, and you know it's a it's an ongoing program that's always being developed, and people are welcome to also maybe give workshops if you know yeah. participate. share their talents. Yeah, right? exactly. There's so much talent out there, right? So much. That's the interesting thing, and that is a little enclave of. Of all of that, lots of artists. Yeah. Um, yeah, and art is sales tax exempt there, which is oh, a lovely okay. thing from Rhode Island. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Yes, yes. So what else is? is so we jump to May. Um, yeah. April will be lovely, but the, um, the events happening there's something. Uh, the Sunday, May 26. It's a it's a gong bath. It's by the Sounds of Harmony. They have started coming regularly, it seems, and so people really enjoy that. You bring your cozy stuff, you make a little nest for yourself, you enjoy the relaxation. Yeah. And, and the, that's the key, you've got to make a nest. You do. Yeah, so you've got you to come, come with, with nesting the right... materials. I've done this before, not with these people, but you know, I know it's fabulous. It's, it's like getting a massage with sound waves. Yes. Like it really is. It, it's bizarrely relaxing. It's really and great to just... Meditative and... Some people Drop fall asleep down. and start snoring and they just add to the <laughs> orchestra there, right? <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. It is great. Oh, nice, nice. So that's May. That's May. And yeah. jumping to June, the woman who throws the farmer's market weekly also produces an event that's kind of a new event for Four Corners. It's on June 8th this year and it's called the Farm Coast Ramble. And so it's an art and garden ramble. And she likes to picture that as rambling around the neighborhood yeah. um, and checking it all out. But then on the corner, there'll be lots of vendors and artists and different things happening. Um, so that'll be really lovely in June. So a little kind of permission to snoop into some gardens? or Is that Actually, the vibe or what? Yeah, I mean, you can walk all around Four Corners. It's kind of oh, connected okay. to the, the sculpture garden, too. It's It will be held in that corner lot okay. across from Gray's. There'll be a big parking situation up the street as well. So we expect a big event. All right. So um, just get there and there's just... Plenty to do. Plenty yes. of it's sensory. It's also a collaboration yeah. with the Art Center. So it's, yeah. you know, Meredith with the, four, the, with the uh, excuse me, the Farmer's Market and yeah. then the Art Center collaboration. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. that'd be great. All right. Goodness. Also an event that has been around a long time and was gone for COVID is coming back this year, Ju uh, July 4th. There'll be an art, um, excuse me, antique sh show. Oh. So it'll be hosted by a new person. So we're excited to meet them. And that is also held in the sculpture garden. Okay. So you, it'll just be full of amazing booths with all kinds of different antiques. Okay. So that will add to the fun of Four Absolutely. Corners. Absolutely. It's so nice to resurrect some of those things that got shut down that were really special, right? And yeah. brought a lot of people and it's just, it feels good. There's always a lot going on on 4th of July, but in the morning, it's kind of a beautiful day to come to Four Corners, get a coffee and then walk around and then go to your other things in the afternoon. It's just... Yeah. That was always a fun thing to do, yeah, I thought. Absolutely. Okay. So that'll be back. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
let's see, we always have the South Coast Artist Tour that happens in Four Corners and all around. Yeah, so that's a big scheduled like it drop is. in, right? It is. The, uh, 75 artists in four towns, Tiverton, Little Compton, Dartmouth, and Westport open up and there's a whole tour. There are loads of sponsors, so it's always great yeah. to see who's It must be an involved. honor to be chosen to be on the tour. It's right? actually an organization that has a lot of artists and then only 75 of them open for the show, for the okay. tour. So they apply. Um, actually, they're, they're just members and then it's sort of a hurry up and do, you know, sign up to be on the map and that's how many they have and it's okay. amazing. It's oh my great. gosh, yeah, yeah. Glad to hear that's happening too. Well, there is so there's so many events, and if I clearly I'm not going to remember all of these. Um, where do I go to find this information? FourCornersArts.org is okay. a website. Also, TiverdenFourCorners.com has the the list of events for the Art Center, and also the merchant events. So that's okay. a really you know great that's the go -to. place to start. And the the Instagram I think is a is a great spot to go. Okay. I just love this idea that it's a collaboration between all the members of this big, large community, and it's just really, really nice. Are, do you find, like, tell us a little bit about the organization, just to close, right? Like, you know, what is your role exactly? I'm actually the treasurer um, okay. at this time, but I like to, you know, help motivate everyone to, we have meetings once a month, and uh, we have a brochure, so definitely pick that up yeah. when you come to the neighborhood. That kind of lists everybody and gives you a little walking tour of all the merchants. Um, oh, that's fantastic. But I'm well, sort of the head cheerleader. I can tell that. <laughs> I, and I, I love that you're back on the show. And I hope Thanks. you'll come again. I think we're going to need to update, you know, so yeah, have you back in the time. summer to hear more about what what's happening there. Does that sound good? That'd be great. Thank you so much, so much, Tiffany. My pleasure. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Okay. Uh, my name is Anna Turner. I'm the Research and Collections Coordinator at the Norman Bird Sanctuary in Middletown, Rhode Island. Um, I've been there for almost two years, and I've had the privilege of prepping for 2024 the sanctuary's 75th anniversary over the course of my time here, um, working on archival research, oral histories, um, digitization of all of the photographs and letters and other print materials in our collection, and then the really fun stuff, which is working with the rest of the NBS team to plan all of the anniversary celebrations, which we are now kicking off. We've had one so far and we've got many more to come. Uh, um, so for those who don't know or haven't visited, um, the Sanctuary is a 75-year-old environmental nonprofit and education center. We've been a community hub on Aquidneck Island and around Rhode Island for over seven decades now. And we were founded by Mabel Norman Cheerio, who was a visionary conservationist in her day and a prolific artist and uh, lived on the property throughout her life and chose with much kind of an extraordinary amount of foresight um, to hand that acreage what was around 200 plus acres in 1949 over to the public um, and it's been stewarded by community members around Aquidneck Island for the last 75 years and has grown and evolved um, it's become a major educational center for you know, two-year-olds through 22-year-olds. Um, we have a curiosity lab. We have um, amazing seven miles of trails and hundreds of acres of protected space for wildlife and for people to enjoy and dozens uh, of community events that are really beloved. And so the 75th anniversary marks an important sort of cause for celebration. Um, it's a significant thing to have stewarded this place um, and at such a high level. I mean, it really is a meticulously maintained property um, that has just hundreds of thousands of supporters behind it. 
So the 75th marks um, a really important milestone for us as a nonprofit. So 2024 really has something for everyone. We've chosen to maintain a lot of our iconic community events um, that people really know us for and that have been going on almost as long as the sanctuary has been around. Um, so things like the Harvest Fair will celebrate its 50th anniversary this year. Birds and Breakfast will celebrate its 41st anniversary. Um, Beach Bash, which is another more recent event, um, but nonetheless uh, very beloved, um, will also happen in a bigger, more fun way this year. Um, but then we have some really signature 75th events and programs um, that will really span from January to December. We've started one of those series, um, our Sightlines Lecture Series, which is a celebration of art and science, um, two of the disciplines most beloved by Mabel Norman Cheerio and really uh, supported and engaged in throughout her life. So we're paying homage to her and also um, centering two disciplines that I think are really critical to our programming at the sanctuary. Um, so that kicked off last Thursday night with our executive director, Katie Ryan, lecturing on um, the cultural significance of Paradise Valley and how NBS uh, is informed by that cultural legacy. And we'll continue in February with Jennifer Bissonette from the RISD Nature Lab. Um, so these will be every Thursday evening, January to May, and then September and October, um, all women in conservation, ornithology, um, arts and culture, indigenous healing, um, and cultural heritage. So yeah, that is one of our signature events. We'll also be hosting BioBlitz this year in early June with the Rhode Island Natural History Survey. Um, and then we'll have an artist in residence in March and early April, Nina Elder, who's coming to us from New Mexico and really, um, in a really fascinating way, blends sort of conservation research and climate change activism with really embodied multidisciplinary art making. Um, so she'll be on campus working with our staff, working with our community, um, to make work that deals with um, geological processes um, down at our third beach property and around Hanging Rock and thinking about sort of coastal erosion and resiliency in the face of climate change. And then we'll have a plein air day, um, which continues that theme of arts and culture on campus and um, connecting with the broader Rhode Island arts community, which is so vibrant here and a really big part of our history, both through Mabel's legacy and through just decades of, of very cool artists working at NBS and with us. So um, there's really, there's all sorts of entry points for learning more about our history um, through programming this year. I'm really excited for the Plain Air Day. I don't, to my knowledge, I don't know if we've done a formal one before. If we have, it was years ago, and I know even in the short time I've been at NBS, but in, in a lot of my research, you know, I know we have amazing artists who are connected to the sanctuary for one reason or another. So to get to host them all on campus um, and allow them to enjoy what is really such a breathtaking sort of open studio space um, will really be a treat. And that's a free event. There'll be complimentary food. We've got a really generous sponsor in Kitchen Companion Catering. Um, so it'll be a really, I think, community-oriented, creative, um, fun day. And we just have to, fingers crossed, for good weather. So you never know. I think the gardens on campus are amazing. We have seven officially, I believe. Um, three in particular that are really, um, I think, fun as a hiker to in interact with. Um, and one of those is Mabel's Garden, which is particularly steeped in NBS history and the Newport Historical Society has some amazing photographs of Mabel actually working in that garden. She loved the color purple and so a lot of the kind of herbs and other flowers in there are purple um, and it's been beautifully maintained and actually kind of 
revived um, through volunteers over the past few years. So that's a beautiful spot and most hikers don't know that it's open to the public and that you can incorporate that into your next hike. Um, and then the good gardens and the food forest are also really beautiful, um, active projects ongoing um, that are a testament to, I think, what has always been a through line at NBS, which is just really concerted volunteer efforts um, that make for beautiful spaces on campus. I mean, I think the gift of open space on an island that's as kind of spatially constrained as a Quidnick Island um, is really remarkable. Um, and it's also, we're kind of tucked away, and so you might stumble upon us. I, I hear it every day. My desk is right next to the front door, and I hear people coming in saying, I didn't know this existed, and I, or I just drove by, and I'm curious what you guys do. So there's this real sort of hidden gem quality to the sanctuary. Um, and in a time of increasing uh, climate change, and certainly we're in a vulnerable part of the state along the coastline, um, to have a place as protected for both wildlife and people as the sanctuary is really special. Um, and I think just that it has always, it's really remained um, like a third place for the community. It's a really um, active, engaging hub for meeting friends and being with family and connecting with people who care about the same things. It's so many nature lovers and conservationists and youth educators um, all together in the same place in this little corner of the state, um, I think is a really, you know, remarkable thing to have sustained over the last seven decades, so. Uh, the Norman Bird Sanctuary is open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We've got programming after hours, which we encourage folks to attend. Um, we've got Sunday morning bird walks, Wednesday afternoon walks, all free. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff to do. The Curiosity Lab, which is amazing for families um, and also for all ages, um, is open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and that's a great space if you're not looking to brave the cold. Um, through the winter months. Um, and we'll also have free trail access for all um, February, March, and April of this year through Discover Newport, an amazing local supporter of our work. Um, so we encourage you all to come on out and we're, um, we're happy to have you and, and look forward to celebrating with you. My name is Elijah Valentine. I'm the uh, TerraCore Youth Education Coordinator at Norman Bird Sanctuary. Um, and so I do a lot of the nature-based education at Norman Bird Sanctuary and, and involved with a lot of different uh, programs, a lot of which are, are coming up in the next couple months. Um, so TerraCore is kind of uh, a subsection of AmeriCorps. We focus more on environmental education, environmental stewardship, and also uh, food access. So TerraCore is a service position. It's uh, 11 months. And basically over those 11 months, we, we try to uh, complete three capacity building programs. Um, and so those are programs that are trying to, to boost a nonprofit that we're stationed at. Um, and so I'm one of two TerraCore members at Norman Bird Sanctuary, um, more focused on education. And then we also have a, a land stewardship coordinator um, who's more focused on the land itself. I believe environmental education is, is very important because uh, it's probably one of the biggest problems um, that we have, or that I feel we have in America today, is uh, teaching uh, the youth about what they can do to conserve our planet and uh, how they can really be stewards for the generations that come after them. Um, and so that all starts with education, you know, if you don't educate the youth on why or how to save um, species that are on the brink of extinction, then uh, you won't have them in the future. So BioBlitz is an amazing uh, you know, event hosted by the Rhode Island Natural History Survey. It's actually the longest uh, running BioBlitz or continuously running BioBlitz um, in the world. 
And uh, basically what happens is on June 7th and 8th, um, a bunch of scientists and uh, kind of animal lovers come to the sanctuary and they document every single species um, that, that is found on the property from frogs to birds to mammals to fungus to plants so anything that can be classified is classified and really what they're trying to do is get a species diversity um, list of, of all the different uh, regions in Rhode Island so before they were last year it was over in the Charlestown area and so this year fitting for the 75th anniversary uh, we have it at Norman Bird Sanctuary yeah, so uh, it's on June 7th and 8th. It's a 24-hour event. Um, if you want to learn more about it, uh, I'd definitely go to the Rhode Island Natural History Service Survey uh, website. And uh, basically, they're going to come out with the registration in the next couple of months. And so you'll have to register online for the event. And then you show up on the 7th and 8th. It's a 24-hour survey, but you don't necessarily have to be there the full 24 hours, um, although a lot of people do. And uh, yeah, there's even the option to camp overnight um, on Norman Bird Sanctuary, which is not something most people get the opportunity to do, so that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so there'll be you get paired up with a, um, a scientist that's leading a group on a, a certain category of species. So. If you say um, are interested in in bugs, you can be paired up with a bug expert. If you're more interested in marine species like fish, um, you can get paired up with a scientist that focuses on that, and they'll be your team leader and take out your group to document um, what we find on the property. Yeah. So the Curiosity Lab is our nature education uh, lab that we have on the property. Uh, it is open Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, and potentially Saturday, depending on volunteers. Um, and it's open from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Um, it's a great space if you have um, any, any kids ranging from, you know, really young kids all the way up to middle schoolers. Uh, it's just a great space for them to uh, have a quiet reading time, uh, take a look at uh, different biofacts under a microscope. Um, there's the new hydro hideout that we have uh, that we just opened up in January that'll be up um, for the next year, and that has to do with um, water studies. So the um, George Norman, the one of the people that purchased uh, Norman Bird Sanctuary's land initially, uh, he was instrumental in um, creating the Newport Waterworks. So it's kind of centered around um, water stewardship. Um, and a some other research that we had conducted on the property the past year. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of cool different um, nature-based activities in the Curiosity Lab, um, and it is open to anybody in the general public that would like to come by.